this is Andy Two, and this video is about the foot controller of a Singer Model 99K sewing machine. This is also called the motor controller, the foot pedal, the speed controller. And what we're looking at here is the housing of the controller, and it's metal. The footrest itself is metal, the housing is metal, and the back plate or back cover is metal. It has some uh, small cushions, kind of a rubbery type, that are called the back cover cushions and it has the cord of course and if you saw some of my other videos you know that cord is hardwired into part of the housing of the motor so what I'm going to be doing in this video is taking apart and checking and cleaning and maybe adjusting if necessary this foot controller and it does work right now and it actually works pretty good you plug it in here it doesn't have too much travel before the motor kicks in it travels about halfway down but you can control a slow speed with it all the way up to the highest <laughs> so I mean it's working it's working okay so I, I maybe not need to do anything with it but I'm going to work on it now uh, some of the news about this is that I believe there is an asbestos heat shield in here uh, when I was learning about this and looking at uh, parts documents and so forth, uh, they just call it con uh, controller insulation. But uh, there's a lot of people, including me, I believe, that that heat shield uh, or insulation in there is asbestos. And... Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the asbestos and clean and clean up the controller and stuff, but I got to make clear I'm not recommending that you do this. Uh, this is my way to do it. I have some experience from my career of working uh, with and around and in asbestos, and uh, that was back in the 70s and 80s. And a lot more about asbestos is known now. And there's like 3,000 products in the world that have asbestos in it. And it's a very dangerous, uh, cancer-causing thing in many cases. So, uh, again, I'm not recommending that you do this. I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. I don't even know if there is a best way. Um, so, if you have a problem with your controller and you don't want to get involved with any of that, maybe the best thing for you to do is to unplug the controller from the wall and come right here and cut the cord off and go buy yourself a twenty dollar new electronic controller and wire the cord into it then you're done so I guess that's that's enough disclaimer maybe <laughs> um, I'm gonna put on some gloves and some breathing protection and some eyewear protection and stuff and then I'll start the video Okay, to open the uh, foot controller up, there's a little screw underneath the footrest right up here. And I, I found that I can just hold it in place and use a little uh, socket on this nut here. Uh, to loosen the nut. And then push push that screw back in a little 
and lift up the back cover. And this white pad, it's two and a half inches square and about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And, it, and it's like some compressed layers of paper is how it looks. And you can see uh, somebody's been in here before and there's some loose pieces around. And there's, I think, some loose pieces in here. I think I read that the, the particles of asbestos can be like 0.4 microns or even smaller maybe. So it's tiny stuff. I don't even know if you can see 0.4 microns with your eye. So uh, I have a spray bottle with tap water and a little bit of liquid dish soap. And... Uh, And I mean like maybe a quarter, one quarter teaspoon of soap maybe in the water. So I just want to take a disposable rag. I like, I like the cotton because it's absorbent and I think the fibers are going to stick to it. And I just want to try and wipe everything up. The water with a little soap I found to be tacky and uh, not run off as quick. Now, to remove this, there's a couple more nuts here and according to the parts diagram they're supposed to be washers. And I think that they're um, on top of the asbestos. So I'm going to bring up this uh, strain relief here, or try to, the rubber grommet. Let's see if I, I, I was hoping I could just pull this up, but it doesn't seem to want to come up. Well, the strain relief is really, really hard, so I guess I'll push the cord through it for now. So I have to get a work area around this uh, asbestos. I'm going to go ahead and spray everything down. And wipe some of that cord off. And hoping that this socket is the same size. Of course, I'm going to have to wash all the tools now. The asbestos is kind of coming apart because it is just paper. I don't see a washer yet. I have the little nut. I have this nut. Looks like a washer underneath maybe. I see some of this is already broken off. And maybe you can see the thickness of it. So, get this in the disposal bag. I've uh, already used this quite a bit. Let me spray this a little bit more. I'm going to wipe up what I can get to. I'm going to try and grab that asbestos. It, it looks like there's the washer. Okay, so we had one washer. There's supposed to be two, I th thought. Kind of pick up what I can of all this paper. I'm going to dispose of that. Uh, let's 
So I think I'll go ahead and take my gloves off. Try and keep my tools clean as I go. But again, I'm going to have to wash them. So, let's turn this guy over. And here's one screw from the side. That's the screw that had the washer. And let me get another cloth here. This is the one that was going up. See, and I could see white paper residue on the threads of the screw. And the other screw is in there, but it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to pull out because it hits the footrest. So I'm going to see if I can just lift the carbon stack system out of there. Okay. There that is. You get the idea how how it's looking. It's way out of adjustment. I can see that. Got a little animal hair in here. Not uncommon. Let me just go ahead and take this wet cloth and wipe off what I can. Wipe some more of the cord. Now my other screw, I'm hoping I can bend or not bend but angle now and get out of that housing because the the footrest is like riveted on so I don't see a way to take it off. I don't know if I'll be able to get that screw out or not. I guess I'll just leave it in there for now. I really would like to get this strain relief out of here or the grommet but whereas the foot or the base what I call the foot but the back cover cushions are still kind of squeezy and pliable like a black licorice chunk uh, this uh, grommet right here, maybe it's metal. I don't know because it doesn't, it doesn't want to budge at all. Oh, there, okay. I think at one time it was, I don't think it's metal. It's either hard plastic or really hardened uh, rubber or vinyl or something like that. Let me spray this out pretty good here. Now, if you've seen any of my cleaning videos, you know I clean this all with a crud cutter and blow it dry with a hair dryer. And I'm still going to do all that, but I'm hoping to get as much of the loose paper, if it is asbestos, you know, get as much of that gathered up and off of there and contained as I can. Okay, I'm going to, I got my little strainer here to put my little parts in for cleaning so I don't start losing them. So I'm missing a washer, looks like. Let's see, this came off, so I'll put it in there. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be carbon stacks in there, just like the other ones that I've done. But I think I'm going to take the... I think I'm going to take these cords off now. So I can kind of wash some parts and feel more comfortable that if that was asbestos paper that it's I've gotten it out of the area if I get some 
water or soapy water on the carbon discs inside if they are inside. I'm not too worried about that. They'll dry out. I'm more worried about getting the surface clean. Okay. Some more little parts for my cleaner. Here's the cord. Let's get a fresh clean thing to lay that on. Mm -hmm. So just clean this. Let me just wipe this down a little bit again. Get around the strain relief. It's a, like a metal clip you bend on there. It has kind of a plastic or stiff cardboard inside. And it crimps onto the cord and prevents it from coming out of the foot controller. So the strain, if you know, if it's pulled on, the strain is right here, not on your wires up here or the connections. Okay, get all this stuff. Whoops, another little screw. I guess I better check this before I wad it up. Oh, you see that? Did you hear that? I heard a screw drop out of there somewhere. There it is. I almost threw that away. So, I'm going to take my tools. See, I use this tool. I'm going to take the back cover. And I'm going to take the housing. And I'm going to take my little parts. And I'm going to go clean them in the sink like I do. At the end of this video, I'll put a link to uh, one of the videos showing how I, how I clean these small parts. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll start disassembling the center part here. And see if there is a carbon disc stack in there like the other ones that I've done. Okay, I got all my all my little parts uh, clean, and the housing and the black back plate all cleaned with the crud cutter and blown dry. And uh, that that screw never did. I tried again to get that screw out, and it just wasn't. Oh, did that come out now? Maybe if I unscrew it. <laughs> Hey, that's the secret, huh? Okay, I hope I remember that, putting it back together. So just uh, clean up my work area here a little bit. And then we can get started on the main reason we open these up and take a look at them. It was out of adjustment, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, how you can tell, even though it was working pretty good. Oh, boy, I'm glad to get that off. Um, you can make it work better so that you have more, more control. You want a smooth operation when you're, when you're using your foot controller. You know, you want it to, to, to be able to get a slow start if you want, or slow down when you're turning a corner and you're sewing and stuff. So normally when you look at these, this little uh, back plate here, when you, when you push on the pedal, it does some work in the front, I'll explain, to move this forward. And it pulls this back plate into these contacts, which start making contact with the carbon discs in here. And normally, the resting position for this is about an eighth of an inch or so inside. More like about that. 
and this is so loose that it's that it's out here and one of the problems with that is the foot controller can get banged around and this can turn like that and then when you're in the front trying to make it go that that plate cannot go inside and start compressing the carbon stacks and making contact to make electricity see so that's why you never want it sticking out f past the end like that it's got to at least be in there a little bit you know But we, we can adjust this um, how we want to, to our mm, kind of our own specification and feel how we like to, to have the control over the speed. Mm hmm. This part up here looks a little different than some of the others that I have done over the years, but not too much. But let me get a towel and we'll open this thing up. Okay, the first thing I, I'm normally going to do is take out this long center screw. And in the uh, other uh, Singer foot pedals I've done like this, the, the button control there's been a like a tension spring in there so I'm assuming that that's going to be in here also but I don't know I think so I don't know why it wouldn't be take this part off the front here there's two two parts this plastic or Bakelite um, part went on first on the screw and then this um, copper, more metallic part went on second. And we can see the end of the screw here, and there's a little nut on it, right? So let's see if I can just kind of hold that nut with my fingers or if I'm going to have to get a wrench. Sometimes they're so old and sticky you got to put a wrench on that end but I, it, I'm able to hold it with just my fingertips up there on that nut so let's see yeah it looks just like the other ones that I've done exactly like them inside mm -hmm. uh -huh. So this this is this whole thing is just called the the controller resistance unit, you know. And uh, I've done these plenty of these before. I'll take these off. You can see the burn marks and the old carbon deposits. We we clean that up first. I clean them with the cut, crud cutter and dry them, and then we can polish these contacts up so they make better contact in here with the end of the discs and then I know under here there's kinda of like a plaster we've talked about this before uh, a lot of people felt this was to pr prevent the screws from turning or not wanting a customer to get in there and then uh, Somebody recently commented to me that they thought it was like an insulating type of thing since you have your the metal uh, contact uh, springs up here, you know, that carry the electricity. They didn't want it arcing into these screw heads that are in here. So I thought, hey, that's, that makes as much sense as anything else, you know. So, I've learned in the past, you got to scrape this out. And uh, people also recommended there's uh, some Loctite products. And if I'm not mistaken, the blue one is less permanent than the red. And they suggested putting some blue Loctite filler in there, you know, that would 
keep them from turning and uh, somebody else just said just put silicone because it would hold them in place and it would also prevent any electricity and both those ideas were good so I'm gonna see when I put this back together I'm really gonna think about that because they did sound like great ideas really so I've got to scrape out the the place that the screwdriver fits into the slot up there and let's see if I got a different screwdriver here I guess I'll get my Chapman set if I can get it in there sometimes the the holder for these bits is is kind of big to fit in the area but I think I can get it in here take out this bit this is this is what I'm talking about sometimes that's kind of bulky to get in the tight area but it might work here At this end, you can see the silver screw tips here. They screw into some metal brackets that hold the contact for the carbons. Uh, at the end of this video, another link I'll give you is to a series I did of how to restore the button controller. And this goes into a lot more detail about taking this apart and what all the parts are called. and. Uh, you know putting it back together and all of that stuff but I wanted to open this up because I was very curious to compare it to other controllers I have done there's the little screw well it's kind of a long screw I got carbon starting to fall out here's the other one And you can see stuff is getting loose here now and there's a little bit of carbon. So let me slip on another pair of gloves and we'll open up this, uh, we'll empty the carbons out and inspect them and clean them if we need to. Okay, I'm gloved up now and I want to take out uh, one side of these uh, carbons. I first was going to take out just the end piece and the metal retention bracket of this side just to show you that. Um, the long skinny screw that I, that I took out uh, goes through the controller body and this retention bracket is what it screws into and that bracket holds an end piece of the carbon stack goes around it like that so when you put that in and tighten the screw down that's what keeps the little uh, pieces from falling out okay and let me let me move this back and I'll put a cleaning towel here and I just use uh, paper towels you know I studied different methods of this and heard about different methods of cleaning these carbon discs and I tried a few and this is the one that I always end up doing I'm just gonna hold one side and dump the others out here I try to anyway. Whoops, I got a few spilled out here. So first let me show you that end piece that comes in contact with these. You know, when you're pushing down on the pedal, this uh, backing bracket pushes these contacts in and they're making contact like that. And I talked about these, and I'll show you how I clean those in a minute. But what I'm hoping, let's see if I can get this light up here better. 
is if you can see the blackness, the burnt carbon around here. And that's what we want to look for. We want to look for damaged discs and kind of burnt, I guess I would call them discs. And when I see them, I have found that just um, rubbing them, usually along the, a paper towel, will clean that stuff off. And uh, it's less likely to damage anything. And the back side here too. This one's, whoop, this one looks pretty, sorry. This one looks uh, clean. It doesn't look uh, very damaged or anything, but I'll just rub it along here a little bit to, to polish it up. Now right away, I see one here that really shows clearly uh, some burning and carbon waste on there. And this is the other end carbon disc opposite from the big one and the bracket. It's the piece that goes in first into the little uh, tunnel area. And you can see it's about twice as thick as all the other discs. And it's not unusual for it to have this kind of residue. But, uh, let's see if I can point this down a little bit. But these, um, these polish off real easy, normally. And um, you just gently, gently hold them and rub them across. And the paper towel is textured enough to uh, wipe off that carbon deposits on. Now you see I got most of it already. There's just a couple of little spots. And the trick with this is you have to push down firm enough to be able to slide the, the disc along. But if you push too hard, it'll crack or break. Okay. Uh, especially these thinner ones. They can very easily um, just crack or chip off. So most of these look good. Most of these don't have a heavy residue. I still brush them off here a little bit just to get any dust or any little burn spots off. But you see the edges are still uh, round. There's not much wear on them. So these carbons are good. They can go for years. And the, the, you'll get much better power and a much smoother operation if you clean off any of those burn marks. And if there are broken or discarded ones, you can discard two or three from each side and still have the controller operate um, uh, operate well. I think the most I've ever discarded was four on each side. But it's very common to have at least one or two cracked or damaged per side. And uh, if you saw one of the videos I did, uh, probably 75 or 80 percent of them were all damaged and some had just turned to flat powder. So, um, I'm going to go through these and do the same thing with the rest of these. And I'll put aside any damaged ones. And then I'm going to come back and we'll, we'll check the other side of the controller. We'll check the, the carbon disc over there. Okay. I have all of these cleaned up now except one more I wanted to show you that was the only other one that I found heavy deposits on. Uh, the other ones really were, were pretty much fine. I went ahead and rubbed them a few times on each side just to get any uh, surface 
uh, carbon or loose carbon dust off of them but um, they were really fine okay and that one looks good now and so I, I have the cap and I have what I call the end plate the other one that's twice as thick and uh, not counting those two the others added up to 52 carbons and I, and I wrote that number down to remind myself and then there was one that had like a little broken off edge and a little flat piece on one edge now, I didn't find that piece anywhere so it might have just put it been put in that way from the factory and it wasn't all burned up or, or uh, deposit carbon deposits on it or anything it was just like a little piece was gone and I have seen that before I'm gonna dump out the other side of the controller here and we'll take a look at it show you what that look at you have the center tunnel which takes the the bigger uh, the bigger screw and the tension spring goes in there and then on each side you have a smaller tunnel that the carbon disc goes through and then if you look next to that center oh wait I think there's one more stuck in there there we go <laughs> uh, if you look at the center tunnel where the spring goes on each side you can see a little narrow tunnel that that uh, these long narrow screws go through and this I wash this I use the crud cutter and uh, you know I clean it all up to get all this in here and I have uh, see if I got it handy I, I don't but I have like a bottle brush I have a few of different sizes and I I run it under water and spray it with a crud cutter and scrub it out if you watch the series of restoring a controller like this you'll see more what I mean but um, there's the retaining bracket the metal retaining bracket and here is like the cap one and on the inside it, it has some deposit you see some discoloration there but on the tip of it here you, you see a lot more just like the other one and that that kind of arcing and is is what makes those uh, metal and carbon deposits on here so uh, let me clean that up real quick I'll just uh, rush it around here scrape it around rub it around on the paper towel and it cleans up real nice the first thing I read about was using an art eraser on these and I did and it was pretty messy and I broke two or three of these thin discs trying to do that so I thought well there's got to be a better way and uh, I just fooled around with other methods until I thought about rubbing it on fine sandpaper and I did one and whoa it's way too rough so then I just took a paper towel I'm looking for the end piece that's twice as thick and I'm not oh here it is yeah here's the thick one and like the other one if I can get it right in the light here looking through my camera you can see it's pretty blackened uh, with deposits so let me let me clean that off so you never know what you're gonna find in a controller you could have broken ones you could have a bunch of powder in here you could have some that are very clean and I think some of it is based on how much it was used 
and also how much slow sewing was done. It's kind of odd these carbon resistor stacks like once the electricity starts going through it's going through but when you're going slow you're not pushing hard on the controller button or footrest you're not compressing the carbon stack very much so there is more resistance and that creates more heat so if you do a lot of slow stitching you will notice the controller gets warmer and hotter whereas if you do fast um, sewing you are compressing the carbon stack a lot more so there is less resistance and less resistance means less heat so when I see uh, a machine that <coughs> that looks in good condition it's not all beat up but the pedal has got a lot of carbon deposits and stuff like that I figure uh, it didn't have a lot of use but it had a lot of use as slow now on some of these I'm seeing let me pick a couple here so I could show you I'm seeing here's a good one where instead of the whole thing having deposit it's just more like a corona around the edge and I didn't see a single one like that in the first stack and I'm and I'm seeing a few like that here and I honestly can't tell you why you know like why does this side of the stack and I don't know if it has to do with the negative and positive current um, I'm guessing maybe that's it the way the current flows but I mean it's still current so I don't know but I have a number of these that have more like around the edge than the solid like here's one that you know that's got more so these are gonna need a lot more cleaning right and I think one time I noticed this too when I took one apart and when I counted one stack had like 51 and the other stack had like 44 some very low amount and maybe that created some imbalance of resistance and that's why because it was the stack with 44 that had more of this corona type burning in deposits so I, I'm gonna turn on the radio here and I uh, clean these up and then I'll come back okay I've got these uh, carbon discs all polished up and counted now there were not any broken on this pile on my left but I may have found why some of these had that dark corona and there was a lot more of them with carbon deposits if you remember in this stack I had 52 including the one that had a side missing a little chip off of it. In this side I had 57 and that's uh, one of the bigger discrepancies I have found and it reminded me of uh, a similar one I had in the past where one side was darker. So I'm that kind of adds to my theory that when there's an imbalance of discs inside the controller that um, that they get uh, burned up more or they get more deposits while I was off screen I went ahead and and washed and dried the controller I mean the uh, resistor stack body and all of the little associated uh, parts that go with it so what I'm going to do to balance these out is I'm going to discard the disc that has the chip out of it there and which will leave me with 51 and I'm gonna just move three of the disc over to that side so that'll give me 54 and I started with 57 and removed three so that'll give me 54 here so that way the stacks will be balanced out 
and I, I think it's always good to go that way. Now, to put these back in, um, for me, I've just developed this method of dropping two or three in at a time, and I have a, a little barbecue stick here, so what I do is uh, I have to start with that base one, the end one, which is double thick, and that goes in first. So I'll drop it down in there and just just run that around to make sure that it's flat. And then I'll drop two or three in at a time, like I said, and just make sure that they're down in there flat. And I ensure you don't want to watch me do that 108 discs. <laughs> so when I get the 54 discs in each side, I'll come back. Okay, I, I put the 54 discs in each side, and I was sure to put the double thick one in first, uh, and that they were all laying flat. I didn't have one standing up. And on this side, I went ahead and put in the retention bracket and the bracket screw. So this side's all finished. I didn't want them spilling out while I was trying to show you the other side. See if I was going to be able to. You can kind of see the bracket in there and the tip of the screw, right? And there's the screw installed here. When you're ready to put the bracket on, um, I have found that there's that they're like um, a little. The bracket's not flat. Let me put it that way. When I, when I look at it from this side, it curves up. If I turn it over, it's curving like the curve is down. And I remember how I did that one. Whoops. Uh oh, I had some of those come out. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of when I'm moving all this stuff around now. I've got some discs that slipped over into the center where the spring goes, one or two discs. So let me push those out. Okay. And let me put those back in on the right side here. Make sure they're seated flat. I'm going to put the cap connector carbon on. Now I've got to put the retaining bracket on. And I put so the, the, the curved end goes down. I'm not sure you'll be able to see that. But the curve end is down, and so, so of course, this, this round end goes over that cap carbon, and, and the flat part of it goes over the, goes over the screw hole, because you've got to put this screw up through the body into that hole and tighten it, and that carbon uh, retention bracket is what's going to hold everything there. Let me turn it around this way. So you can see I've got the retention bracket. And what I try and do is line up the hole in the bracket with the hole through the body so I can see light through there. Not in the not in the big hole, but this little this little screw hole on the side. When I, there. When I think I've got it over the hole in the body, I try and press against it and hold it there with my fingertip while I put the screw in and get it started. And this can be a, a kind of tricky. Um, don't be surprised if it takes you a few tries. You'll know pretty quick if the screw is in the hole of the bracket. 
because as you're turning it, you'll start to get resistance. And then a few more turns, it'll go through the hole in the bracket. And you'll feel the end of that screw hitting your fingertip. And it's, it sure isn't happening for me this time. So let me go back up here and see if I can get that bracket lined up good and get the get the hole in the bracket over the little tunnel for the screw try and hold it there without moving it get my bracket screw in there and I'll turn it backwards a couple times for luck and try and get it started and I'm trying to wiggle that bracket around with my fingertip to see if I can't get the hole lined up. But I, I, I don't think I'm having much luck here. Eh. Nope. It's funny because when this happens to me and every time I turn it up and look I can see yeah I see daylight right through that little hole in the bracket right down into the screw tunnel it looks terrific I put my finger on there to hold it in place so I figure out when I'm putting my finger on it I must shift it out of place or something <laughs> okay. Oh there. See the little hole? Right there. Really looked good, didn't it? So part of working on these is kind of tedious, cleaning all the carbons, polishing them, you know, and then trying to get these fiddly parts back together. So you can see why a lot of people cut the cord and put a new electronic uh, controller on the end of the cord and say, okay, I'm done. Look at that guy Andy Tube, he's been working on this thing forever. He still can't get it. Ha ha ha. There. Whoo. I started to feel resistance on the screw. And sure enough, now I can feel the tip of the screw coming through the bracket and rubbing into my fingertip. So when you tighten these, you want them to be snug so vibration doesn't, you know, loosen them. But you don't want to crank down real hard on them. There. So now I've got my two retention brackets and my my cap carbons are clean and shiny. Alright, got my two retention screws. I don't have any Loctite or silicon so I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. Uh-huh. Now Let's look at these uh, other parts that I clean. Let me get this up, fold this over so I got a clean side. And I'll get that carbon from the towel everywhere. So that's the main screw for the spring. There's the spring. It is clean. The metal bracket, the kind of fiberglass or mm, bakelite bracket, the nut for the end of the screw, and the base plate, and the contacts. Now, I like to brush oil on that uh, screw especially. 
not on anything that's going to contact the electricity but on the on the screw so I would consider this the, optional if you don't feel like and doing the spring it. okay uh, because to me it's not as shiny uh, uh, a and the metal and if you live in a, go ahead and put a, a humid climate I don't want uh, rust getting in here or anything so I'm just gonna put a real light coat of oil on now, here on these contacts I like to clean them up coat of oil and uh, on, on the, the the spring contacts in the front I also like to uh, clean those up and I have used metal polish and I have used my Dremel with a wire brush and I happen to have the Dremel here uh, out and hooked up so I'm going to go ahead and do that and there's my there's my wire brush on there it's gotten a lot of use huh and I'm just going to polish those up On the spring contacts, uh, you don't see any carbon deposits because they don't contact carbon, but they can get some oxidation, so I just like to uh, polish them up. Like I said, I've done it many times with a, a Q-tip, cotton bud, and some metal polish to clean them up. Uh, these do contact the, the um, carbon caps. So that's why they usually will have carbon deposits and they can be pitted. And I've seen some pitted so bad that I had to polish them up and put some solder on there, a couple drops of solder, uh, let it harden and then come back and grind it smooth because they were just pitted so bad they almost had holes in them. But that's pretty rare. That is not uh, very common to have to, to see that. Okay, so um, the, the way this goes now is we have our whole carbon stacks and everything in there. So I'm going to drop my uh, spring down in that uh, tunnel for it. Well, maybe I should, sometimes it's better if you the, the spring can be kind of twisted on here sometimes so maybe it's better if I if I do that first it's not uh, different different controllers 
you can't do this. You just drop this the spring in the hole and and put this over it. But this this one and a couple others I've done, the spring is actually kind of twisted on to the metal there. And then we're going to drop it in here. Okay. And then put the main screw through there. And then come on this side. And let's see if I on the on my other type I did this nut was on before the pieces. So you can take pictures of this if you when you disassemble yours and uh, kind of see the reassembly process of everything. Here's all my other little parts that I cleaned before. Let's see what goes on next here. For assembling and the shape and the style of the uh, controller resistant unit, it's very similar to the dozens of button control uh, foot pedals and foot controllers that I've done. You know, two carbon stacks with a, a spring system and uh, contacts here that are adjustable from this end. But on the button style foot uh, pedals, the, con the mm, resistance unit is screwed into the back or the base of the controller. And up in here is a rocker arm system that the button rests on so that when you push it, the rocker uh, pulls that screw forward and, uh, you know, uh, compresses the carbons tighter and gives you more speed. But on this, what, what I'm seeing here is that the uh, resistance unit uh, screws into the top cover in here like this and that the um, I guess I'd call it the foot rest or the foot pedal just has a couple of hooked arms here and they're going to be set up so those arms are behind this plate and then uh, the metal brace is screwed onto the screw. So when you step on that foot pedal, it pulling that kind of hook ends, and that's what pulls on the resistant unit, uh, tension screw and everything. So it, it's it's different. Um, that whole part of of the body and the there's no rocker arm and so forth. So where the other type, uh, you know, I would just assemble this whole thing and then put in two screws to hold it to the base plate. Um, we're, I'm going to do the same thing, but kind of do it on the top cover. So what I want to do here is reattach the cords because once this is mounted in this style, I can't uh, put the wires on or off. Uh, the other style, the wires are up on the top. And I can put the wires in after. But these have like a, a recessed area here that the wires come and turn the corner and they're mounted on the front. So once this is in here, I can't uh, install or remove the wires. So I'm going to do that now.
Um, you can find it here. And as far as the way the wires attach and the little uh, spring contacts and everything, it's very it's very similar. You know, the contact's going to set up here, and it's kind of bent down and in. And then there's a small uh, connector screw that that goes through the crimped on lead of the wire and goes through the spring connector into the unit. And that was the same kind of setup uh, on all of the button type I did, except what I'm working on right here was all on the, on the top of the resistance unit, not on the front. So we got one. And let's see, where's my other one here? We go on like this side. Get it set up there, and my other screw. So, it's interesting to me to see this, because this was made in 58, and I've used button style, con uh, you know, I've worked on button style controllers that uh, were decades before 1958, and this same decade, And uh, I did. I never knew there was kind of like two style uh, foot controllers. I didn't know about this metal one. I don't know how long it's been around. I don't know how long they've been making them. So I've got the wires attached now, and uh, I am going to have to put this onto the screw. And I noticed when I was taking it off, uh, one side has some little wear marks here. And what they're from is from, they're from the hooks of that foot pedal rubbing on there. So I'm going to have to put that facing the back. See if I can get it in there and slide it onto that screw. And the uh, the tab part sticks up. It's going to sit like that. And then for the metal bracket, um, on the bottom of it is a little shelf or tab. And that's going to face back on the bottom. And that's what supports this uh, pull bracket. But it screws on. It doesn't just slide on the screw. It actually is threaded. And that's so you can uh, tighten the screw to hold everything together. And then that's how you make your adjustments for speed. So I'll get that set up on there with the tab facing the back and down. And then I'll tighten it on the screw enough to get it started and hold it on there while I mount this into the top body. I can get that screw started. Is it, it's not wanting to... Oh, because I put it... Did I put the... Sh oh no, I had it, I had it right. Huh. It just didn't want to start. The screw didn't feel like it wanted to start into the metal bracket. Let's try it again here. There we go. And I'm thinking that this different style was why this back um, bracket here looks so loose when I opened it up. Because there's got to be more slack in it for those hooks of the foot pedal to get behind here. And I'm thinking once they are behind there, 
when the cover's on that it's going to pull the slack up. Now, I do remember putting this on. I kind of had a, a tough time getting this one screw out on this side. Let's see if I can get this up a little bit and point it down more. What's that? It's a little bit of lighting here. So let's see if I can get that. See if I can get that screw in there. It's funny, I had a hard time and look. Now I figured it out. Okay. <laughs> Now, I'm going to uh, use my fingers to push back on the pedal so the hooks are on the bottom here because I want those two hooks, I want those hook, the two hooks here to be behind that plastic pull plate. When I slide the resistance unit on here, there so I've got it on the one screw and I've got the two hooks back here so when I uh, right it's gonna move I got the hooks back here I do Okay. I'm going to go in here and adjust that screw back out a little bit because I've got it in there pretty, pretty tight. And now that I have the, the uh, hooks put in there, let's see. So we got the foot pedal screws back there. Okay. I get this screw up here. And this is the this is the screw or the bolt or whatever that had the washer. So I'm gonna put that back on and just snug it up and start positioning this. See if both of these. Yes. Of course, I don't have the asbestos now, do I? And then my other screw comes in from the top side on the other side of the foot pedal. Line that up with the hole on the controller. Uh, resistance unit and I'll put the other nut here Let's see if I can get up here a little, a little closer yeah You know, in my camera screen, it just doesn't look like there's that much light on the controller. See if I can reposition this. Maybe it's just the angle I'm looking at it through. Okay. So I push on that foot pedal. Yeah, that's starting to make sense, isn't it? So I need to tighten this screw up. It's still uh, pretty loose there. And then I probably have to 
do something with that adjusting nut. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll see. Yeah, I have the adjusting nut on way too far, I can see now. So let me spin it back out so it goes towards the pieces here. Because the metal bracket being threaded and this nut on the back are what keep these two pieces together. That's starting to look pretty good now. Okay. All right. Yes. And I'm seeing here that this distance that the back bracket has gone into the unit is about a sixteenth of an inch or more. And that's more that's more normal what I'm used to seeing. So it, it looks slack when I took it off, but it's because the hooks from the foot pedal aren't back there anymore. All right. This is making more sense to me now. And I like that they have this little cutout on the bottom here. So you don't have to take this apart if you want to adjust your foot controller. I think you're going to be able to put the screwdriver under there and, and find the screw and, and tighten it or loosen it to control, uh, to adjust the control and the speed. And you still see these uh, spring connectors here pointing down. That's because when you depress the, f the foot pedal all the way, they're going to make contact with that metal bracket and just close the connection right here. It won't be going through the re resistance carbons anymore. But up to that point, the speed is controlled by how much it compresses those carbon discs. So that's what we want to adjust now. So, I have my motor running out here still, and uh, let me plug this in, get it live. Where's my wire here? Okay, the light's on, so we're live. And then I'm going to uh, depress this and see what happens here. You see when I depress it all the way, you'll see those contact springs touch the metal uh, bracket there and you'll have full power. So that's, I got plenty of power, full power, but what I want to see is can I control it? See that's better than it was. I don't have to depress it as far to get the motor running. And I can run slow. Yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty good range of control actually. Okay, I almost would like the motor to start running a little bit sooner, but that's a lot better than it was. And the problem is, if you adjust it so that this bracket is too far in, then you're, you're making contact and you're doing a minor, even a tiny bit of compression, and you're going to have electricity going into the carbon stack and since it's not released 
to run the motor, this unit is going to get hot. And that's how you can tell if, you, if you've got it adjusted too close. If you plug it in and don't use it, it should be like room temperature to the touch. If you plug it in in five or ten minutes, you come test it and it's warm or hot, you've got it, the screw, in too far. Okay? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's, it's pretty good. I wouldn't mind adjusting it more, but I'm always nervous that I'm going to go too far. And you notice in all the manuals, Singer tells you to unplug this unit from the wall when it's not in use. And that's why. They don't want, you know, a book or something to fall on it. Or a lot of times these were laying on the floor and you don't want it pushed up against the wall and then the chair or bench pushed in and compressing this a little bit and it starts overheating the uh, carbons and and you have uh, you know a fire or something so they always tell you unplug this unit from the wall when it's not in use but I'm gonna leave it plugged in here and I'm gonna come uh, back in five or ten minutes because right now this this is room temperature it's the same temperature as the you know, it's the same temperature as the motor and the housing, and it's the same temperature as the backing. So I don't feel any heat right now, but let me let it sit for a few minutes, and then we'll test it. And if it's, if it's okay, I might sneak a little bit more adjustment in there, but we'll see. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes now, so I want to check the temperature of this. And it's, it's still the same temperature. It has not warmed up one bit. It still feels the same temperature as everything else. So, you know, I would like to tweak it a little more. So seeing where it is, what I'm going to do is give it a half a turn. Okay, so now my motor starts a little bit sooner in the depression. Look, wow, nice, nice, a nice slow start if I want it. Okay, full range. So, uh, I'm going to give it another 10 or 15 minutes and come back and check it and make sure that my increase hasn't been too much and this starts to get warm or hot. So I'll see you back in, in about 10 minutes. Well it was more like 15 minutes I was uh, answering some comments on the YouTube channel but this is still at room temperature and uh, it has not warmed up at all. So I think I'm going to leave it right there. It's much got a lot more range uh, than it did before. So I'm going to say that that's done and adjusted. And uh, you can see the you can see the cutout here at the bottom even when this uh, grommet which, uh, the more I look at it, the more it's a, it's a plastic, not rubber. But even when that is uh, set down in there, you can see they left an opening so you can get the screwdriver in there to adjust it. If it ever vibrates out or the carbon disc get older and uh, you think you lose some of the, uh, you know, power or adjustability you can adjust it there just remember to test it that, that the unit doesn't feel warm after it's been plugged in 10 or 15 minutes and not in use which would mean that the electricity is leaking in you have it adjusted too tight um, for the uh, back cover now 
I I wash these uh, the cushions and they just uh, slide on. I kind of like that better than the button feet um, controller because those you have to put on and off with a screw. And this was a good idea. And these these look more sturdy. So I like this uh, part of it a bit, uh, uh, quite a bit, that these are. Uh, so easy to put on and off and they're a little bit thicker um, you know rubber but what I've got to what I had to decide I took that uh, what I believe to be asbestos insulation out of here and now I'm wondering um, what I should do the, I've never seen that in the uh, button controller or the cam shell controller that I've done in the past and I've sure done a lot of them and I've never seen an insulation like that but this is the first um, metal casing metal uh, foot controller that I've done so I'm thinking maybe that's why it's there because when this would get warm from sewing uh, you know metal conducts heat so I'm thinking maybe they did that um, so this wouldn't get too warm sitting on the floor or sitting on carpet all of them have these little heat shield uh, tubes slipped over the wiring you know, all the ones I've done had that. But um, after thinking about it, I remembered years ago when I first started um, working uh, telephones, I, I had a five-year progression, what you think of as an apprenticeship, kind of. And uh, the first job was wiring homes and apartments for the telephone wiring during construction. And the plumbers had these heat shield things that they would put behind the pipe. And uh, when they were using their propane torches and stuff to connect the solder pipes. And I thought of that. So at the hardware store, I found one. Uh, this happens to be an OT brand flame protector. Uh, heat shield effective up to 2,500 degrees. And you see, you see it hanging in the back behind where the guy's uh, sweating, doing some soldering of pipes together, you know, with a propane or map glass. And reading on the back, it said it is asbestos free, and it went on to talk about it's made out of a carbon fiber material. So it's, it's almost got like a felt or... Uh, yeah, kind of like a felt would be the closest thing to it. And it looks pretty durable. So you can see a piece is cut out here, right? <laughs> so I, I cut out a piece of it. And I think I'm going to put it in here in place of the asbestos. And uh, I'm, I'm going to maybe punch some little holes to go over those screws. But I'm not going to put it down with the washer, I don't think. I think it'll stay there, um, is my idea anyway. So that's, that's my plan. It's a little bit thicker. It's about twice as thick as the other, but I think there's plenty of room in here. So... I, you know, I'm thinking Singer put it there for, for a good reason. They, they had their reason uh, to put it there. So, now this blanket cost, I don't know, 12 or 14 bucks. Um, you know, so that right there for a lot of people would just say, hey, I am not going through all this. I'm going to cut the cord and just replace the whole controller. But I... You know, I like restoring the original stuff, and I wanted to learn about this. And now I've got I've got this, you know, like 12 by 14 inch blanket that I could make a lot more of these out of if I wanted to. Or uh, I don't use much pro 
propane gas <laughs> or do plumbing, but uh, I've got it. So uh, I know people complain about the button ones getting warm when they sew barefoot, you know. So maybe I could just start putting this on all the foot controllers I do and and see if it, um, you know, didn't help keep the outside uh, cool. And I'm thinking the bake light of the button type controllers um, insulated more than this metal one. Because I figure the metal one just conducts heat like crazy. I wonder if I just put this strain relief down here if that'll kind of hold it in place. Because the heat will conduct right through the screw too. Let's see. It. Let's see if I put this uh, grommet back in here. Uh, how it's going to stay, or if I should punch some holes in there. See that strain relief. I think. I think that looks pretty good. I like it. So there's the new um, controller insulation, except I have to have at least one hole in it here <laughs> to, to get the last nut on, right? <laughs> so we line that up good where I think the screw, I was kind of punching a hole in it with this can opener, but it's uh, tougher, tougher stuff than I thought. So I'm just going to take my snips here and do a cross cut and uh, boy that didn't even, even go through all the way. Sheesh. This is some pretty tough stuff. There, let's see that if that if that'll go and expose that screw so I can get the back plate nut on there. Hmm. -hmm. I need to make that a little bit bigger or can I stretch that around the first nut there? There we go. I think that's going to work. Let's see if we can get this back plate on here now. Get all the cushions inside the corners. Get that back plate on tight. There's my little nut. The socket. the adjustment hole. Mm -hmm. Let's plug it back in here. Here's the motor turning. I don't know, can you hear that or see it? I don't know how it's going to... Done. There we go. Maybe you can see it turning there. Yeah. 
That's a strong running little motor. 0.8 amps, I think I said. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you come back and see me when you have uh, time for one of my <laughs> lengthy, lengthy videos. <laughs> uh, I'm slow. I grind slow, but exceedingly fine, right? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take care of yourself.